Good morning, beauties. We are back with another episode. Thank you for joining me today. So if you know me, you know that I've got terrible, terrible effing luck with tires. And it happened again. Beginning of the season, I ended up blowing a front tire on my way to Kingston. <laughs> Uh, for an appointment, which super sucks. I had to wait for a flatbed. If you saw my Instagram, you saw my stories earlier in the week. <laughs> Just my luck. If you guys know me, you know that I have the worst luck with tires. So now I'm here picking it up. I am at Volkswagen of Kingston. Um, I have a very, very good friend. You met him on the last episode, Adam, who works here, and he was able to facilitate getting me tires really, really quickly. And we had the tire swapped the two front tires swapped and repaired and all of the rest of that good stuff. So we are good to go. We're gonna go and pick it up. Since we're on the topic of having bad luck and kind of shitty things that happen with the car, I think today we're gonna to talk about the five things that I really don't love about my 2019 Lamborghini Huracan. Stay tuned guys. <laughs> And I'm back. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for helping. Absolutely, anytime. Oh my God. Good to see you, bro. Thank you. We were just saying how bad luck I have with tires. It is the worst. So, like this car, in terms of reliability, perfect. It has been lovely. Tires, since every single car I've ever had, I've had shit luck with tires. <laughs> on the way to the first car event in Toronto, we were all on our way driving down, or maybe it was April. Anyway, it was almost exactly a year ago. The same thing happened. There was a crack on the 407 on the highway. I just hit it at the wrong angle and just poof, instantly flat. That one was a bad one. That one I knew, I was like, I hit it and I knew what happened. This one, I have no idea what actually hit. It just, the tire light came on and I had to pull over. Womp, womp, womp. Womp, womp. Put in a cage. Wah, wah. I read about a, a did you say wah, wah? But I'm, I have no idea where the actual hole happened. I got out and it was like, I was like, that's not good. Yeah. Not all right. All right, guys, so we're all settled up. I have four properly functioning tires on the car now. And that reminded me, as I was getting into the car and unlocking it to throw my receipt away, the first thing that I really don't love about the Lamborghini is that the key is so lame. So it is essentially an Audi key, which is kind of fitting since we are here at the Volkswagen dealership. <laughs> but this key is essentially an Audi S4 key. Um, it looks exactly the same. In fact, it's even more boring than an Audi key because instead of you having the actual Audi emblem in chrome, it's just embossed. Like you can hardly see that it says Lamborghini. The only differentiating factor is this little bit on the back here that has a little Lambo logo, which is kind of lame. Like for a car that's as loud as a Huracan, you would expect it to have a funkier key. Really, if you take the key apart, which is there's the key, this piece here is exactly the same as an Audi. In fact, it might even have an Audi logo on it. No, it doesn't, but it does say it's built in Germany. So it doesn't actually say that it's an Audi key, but it is made in Germany. It is the same exact key as an Audi. So kind of blah. 2.8 still, madonna mia. The benefit about having long nails. So we're back, we're back at the studio. And number two of the things that I really don't love about a 2019 Lamborghini Huracan, or any Huracan for that matter, is the front lift system. Go, go, go. Don't get me wrong, the front lift system has saved my butt 12 million times at this point, and somehow I still have the lip that I put on two seasons ago and haven't smashed it to bits. So the lift is great. The problem with the lift is that the safety features of the lift are super annoying. I'll show you what I mean by that. I almost rolled my ankle. Okay, so we're gonna start the car. And the front lift is with the rest of the buttons here on this funky little tray, if you will. I don't even know what to call it. So the front lift is right here on this little row of buttons. All of these do something. Obviously there's the windows, there's the traction control off, there's the four ways. There's my reverse camera, uh, my start stop, which is completely useless. No one, who uses that on a Lamborghini, but whatever. And then the other window button. But anyway, my front lift is here. Now I'll start the car. Cool. So front lift going on up. It's like trying to outdrive. Seatbelt. There you go. Continuous recording will now start. Every single time I was about to talk, that thing goes off of me. Anyway, so front lift, super easy. I'm gonna put the front lift up. You'll see that the car lifts roughly an inch. I'll tell you what is super annoying about it. Now the front, the problem with the front lift is, I'm gonna go ahead and put the front lift down. What happens is if this door is open while the front lift is going down, or if I turn off the car before the front lift is down, it will literally go 
back up. It's a safety feature, so I suppose it doesn't smush anybody's foot. I have no idea what it's for, but it's super annoying. So take a look at this. I'm gonna put in the front lift down and then I'm gonna open the door and you can see what it does. All right, so the most annoying part about the lift is that literally every time I get out of the car, I have to wait for the lift to go down. It's more challenging when I have a passenger who doesn't really know the car, because if I have a girlfriend in the car and they go and open the door, the it cancels the front lift activation. So then I've got to be yell at them or <laughs> tell them to get out of the car or whatever. Like, wait, 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 don't open the door. And it's so, so super annoying. So it's a weird safety feature that I think is completely unnecessary in the Lambo. Also, I kind of hate that it doesn't remind you that the front, like, of course you see it on the screen that the front lift is up, but I hate that once you park, it doesn't remind you to put the front lift down because leaving the front lift up for an extended period of time is actually not a good thing. It's only meant to go over speed bumps or into entryways or difficult maneuverable spots where it's uneven roads or whatever, but it's not meant to be parked with the front lift up. There's days I'll jump out of the car and or put into park and I wish it would say, hey, your front lift is up other than a light. I guess that's just me being picky, but it is kind of an annoying, like it's just missing some convenience features for such a cool option. The other thing with the front lift is on this model year, it's actually not standard. Uh, I don't believe it comes standard until the Evo. Um, and you do have to pay extra for a front axle lift system. So on a car that's this low, if people didn't know any better or you didn't option that package, it is a real struggle to drive this car and it takes away the enjoyment from it for sure. So front lift, good and bad, mostly annoying. <laughs> Since we're still in the car, Another thing that I really don't love about this vehicle is the fact that on this car, you had to actually option a cup holder. It was around a $600 option with Lamborghini and all it did was get you this cheesy little cup holder. Now mine didn't come with a cup holder. I ended up opting to buy all of the parts. So I bought this little Lamborghini trim piece that actually had the hole in it and the cup holder portion. And I ended up dropping the entire dash. So the, the glove box, all the components underneath and all of this panel in order to replace this because I really, really wanted a cup holder. And you'll notice on mine, I have this stupid ribbon here. Reason for that is because <laughs> I actually had to install that after the fact because I had spilled a drink in this at one point while I was on a rally and racing a friend and it got sticky with Red Bull and it's never worked the same since. So it sticks. So usually you're supposed to be able to touch it and it just pops out. It does not, it gets stuck right at the front. So I had to add a little tab to it. How ridiculous is that? The thing cost me almost 600 bucks and it hardly works probably self-inflicted. I did try to pull it apart. It's an enclosed system, so you can't even clean the inside of it. So if anybody ever spills anything in their Lamborghini cup holder, whether they optioned it from the factory or added it afterwards, like I did and spent three hours swearing in the garage trying to install the damn thing. If you ever spill anything, the design is pretty shitty and it gets all gunked up on the inside and there's really nothing you can do. So. Am I happy that I have it now? Yes. Am I sad that it's sticky and doesn't actually work properly? Also, yes. <laughs> oh, just kind of, I guess we'll just kind of make a little loop or something. Sure. That's awfully neat. Alrighty, let's get this lift down. Of course, a truck pulls out in front of us. How annoying is that? My good, good thing I didn't rip it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, why is this an automatic? That's super lame. Driving modes on this vehicle, Sport, Strata, or Strata, Sport, or Corsa. And when you start the car, the default is Strata always. Nobody. No one drives in, no one drives in Strata. So you always put it into Sport. But Sport puts it automatically into automatic mode. And also very few people drive in automatic mode in this car. So not only do you have to start it, toggle it into Sport and then hit the M for manual, <laughs> you've got to do it on every single startup, which is kind of silly, but whatever. Now one workaround with that is that you can start in Corsa, which automatically puts you into manual mode. That's pretty cool. And then you, instead of pushing a whole bunch of buttons and getting into the right modes, you just toggle it back from Oh. <laughs> oh God! You just toggle it. Ouch! You just toggle it back from corset to sport. So sidebar, not a big deal. It's just an extra couple buttons, but kind of a silly design nonetheless. Anyway, where were we? I know what we can talk about. Cruise control. Cruise control was another option that literally, I don't think there's anybody I know that has a 2015 to a 2019 Huracan that actually has cruise control. Cruise control is supposed to be here. They're the only buttons that I have in the entire car that are actually blank. So it drives me crazy, but also cruise control really should be a standard option you would think. And I guess not too many people use cruise control in a Lamborghini, but still 
The fact that it's just an option and it's cruise control, which you'd think would be st since standard in everything and not standard in a Lambo is kind of a weird feature. All right, so number five of the things that I really don't love about the Lamborghini Huracan is the blind spots. Guys, this thing is like driving a cube van without any windows. <laughs> it has terrible, terrible, terrible blind spots. Um, so this vehicle, it has the louver option as opposed to the rear glass. Even the rear glass has atrocious blind spots. So if I'm going to change into the left-hand lane, which I'm not gonna do because there's a Honda there, um, to see when I turn around, all I see is an enormous quarter panel. That's literally it. And to look into my rear view mirror, I have to do everything through louvers. So right now there is a Honda behind me. I think I can't even tell because I can't actually see it. There's a white car behind me and you can barely see it because I'm literally looking through two slats to try to make out what the vehicle is. It is actually nuts. <laughs> it's a Nissan, by the way. I couldn't even tell because I couldn't see the damn car. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> the worst visibility <laughs> ever. Insane. It's actually terrible. So the rear with the rear glass on the window is tiny. It's super narrow. And then of course the engine cover, which you can option as a louver, which is this one, or the upgrade, which is the glass also has terrible visibility. So even the glass portion has just the middle chunk that's glass. So you can see a full field of vision. However, the blind spots are actually atrocious on this thing. It is literally like driving a windowless cube van. On the rally last year, I decided to try out these little funky blind spot mirror things. I've actually never used them and I haven't even bothered taking them off. They don't really do much of anything. I don't love them, but that was kind of my solution because I figured I'd be driving at high speeds and making a lot of quick maneuvers. So I figured it might help me 5%. It don't even think it helped me that much. It was still <laughs> changing lanes blind. So you would think that Lambo would have thought about that in advance. They didn't. And changing lanes is uh, hoping for the best every single time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So I think we're done complaining about the Huracan today. The things that I don't super love about the Huracan. Needless to say, it is my favorite car that I've ever owned and I do love the thing. I just wish that there were a couple of little things that had changed. Anyway guys, thank you so much for joining. Let me know what you think of this episode. Of course, like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.